Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I bring you a video in collaboration with Capture122 and we are going to be talking to you about how to make your editing process a bit more efficient and speedy. I will be covering things about importing your images, using metadata presets and so on, as well as working in post-production, making it faster and smoother in the process as well. So if that sounds like something that you'll be interested in, make sure to stick around. I will also be giving you a discount code in the description below for 20% off Capture 122 yearly subscriptions. So make sure not to miss it. It's only limited to 100 people. So get yours while you can. And let's get right into the video. Okay, so first off, let's start with importing. Importing is very important and making it the right way from the start can really set you up for success. So we're going to be covering a few topics right now from setting up your name to folders and so on. So let's get right into it. So first off, to start our import process, we're going to create a metadata preset. And to do that, we're going to fill up all our information. So as you hear, see here, I'm filling it in with fake information, <laughs> just in case. Um, I'm filling in my name, surname, my city, my address, my email and website and so on, um, just so I have it. And then I'm going to also click on the status on the copyright notice and I'm going to type in 22 and I'm going to save it and I'm going to decide which ones of them to save. You don't have to have the whole thing saved up. And once I have that, I'm going to click save and just name it Anita Metadata Preset. I would like to mention to set up the preset, you have to have a photo open on the screen, um, but it doesn't have to be any particular photo. It can literally be anything. Um, as long as you can just do it as an example and set it up as a preset, um, then you can close the catalog, which we're going to do next. And then we're going to reopen a brand new catalog that we want to work from. I'm going to go ahead and name this catalog Anita Sadowska, just my name and surname, a bit boring, but I just want to keep it simple. Then we press OK and we are into our import stage and now we're going to use a user collection. We're going to click into album and name it Nina Hawaii because that's the photos we're going to be importing. Once we have that done, we are going to press import, but we're not going to import quite yet. We're going to select copy to folder instead of keeping it in the current catalog. And the reason why I do it is because I want to make sure that I have a backup copy of the photos that I um, just imported. So I usually have them in one place on my hard drive and then I just import them into a specific folder just so I have a double just in case. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into the subfolder section and then select a formatting that we want for our folders. So I'm going to name the subfolder Hawaii. Um, so I'm going to have it here and then we are going to go into the group and we're going to select date and time. And then from here, we're going to have different tokens. And from these tokens, I'm going to se select image date, which is month, day and year. And we're going to add it on top of here as well and then save user preset yet again. And once that's done, we're just gonna click okay. Next, let's move on to naming. And I think it's pretty important because you want to make sure that whichever way you name your files, they are not gonna repeat and you're not going to have an overridden files because I feel like that's the worst nightmare of every photographer. So we're going to go into the job name and we're gonna name it Nina Hawaii. And then we're gonna click onto format and we're going to do the same thing as with the subfolders so we're going to go into tokens and i'm personally going to select job name and then image date and finally a four digit counter and this way you make sure that whichever photos and how many images you add to your folder they're not going to repeat themselves and you're going to be all good for all of your jobs Finally, for the final import, I am not going to import all the images because there's probably 700 of them and it's unnecessary for this video. So just to speed it up, I'm going to select this little area here and import these photos ahead. Okay, now that we've imported, we are going to move on to editing and there are a few things that you can do to speed up your process and be a bit more efficient. So stick around and see what you think. So now that we sped up our um, import, 
we have everything nice and set up for our future imports we have all our photos here and as you see it has some presets pre-applied which i really love because i think it makes everything so much faster so as you see here i changed some things in high dynamic range i did some color adjustments as well so if you look at orange with the skin tones it's going to be a bit different and as you see the before and after um, there is a bit of a change so it's definitely super helpful i wouldn't probably use something that is super harsh on my images because it'll be too much to fix but i feel like basic adjustments like this that i do on every single image are super helpful so next what i'm going to do is i'm going to check um, sharpness with a few of these images i have a few of these portraits here that i think are really cool um, but i want to check if there's any particular one that has better um, sharpness than the other so what i'm going to do is i'm going to click here and customize my toolbar and right here we have focus mask and this is what you want to select so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this and drag it up to here and then we click done and then I'm gonna press focus mask and as you see here it shows me where my focus is so some of it is missing the face um, here we have a bit more of the face which is good so as you see, see here, if I press plus, I can also make the images bigger, which is really helpful. Um, so based on what I see here, it seems like there is the most focus in this photo here. So I will probably go for this image and select it. Okay, so once we have our image that is the sharpest, which is number three, I'm going to give it a rating and I'm gonna go and give it a red flag just because I can. Um, and I'm going to deselect all the images and just go back to this one. And then another thing that I want to talk to you about when it comes to workflow and speeding it up is shortcuts. As you saw a second ago, I used command plus and command minus to zoom in and out. It's pretty basic. And as you see here in our cursor tools, we have different shortcuts that we can use. For example, if you want to use crop, you can just press C. If you want to straighten your image, you press R. If you want to use a healing mask, you use Q and so on. So what would be very helpful is to maybe just have a little sheet of paper and write the most useful shortcuts out. Maybe stick them on your computer so you can learn them and memorize them. And then once you have them, you can just use them. So as you see here, I press C and it takes me straight to the tool. Then I can go to R and it gives me the straighten option and I can just play around and try and straighten it out. So this is a great way to really speed up your uh, working process um, together with presets. It makes it way, way more efficient to get through the image edits. Another quick tip is to go into edit, edit keyboard shortcuts, and then have list shortcuts. And this way you can have this whole list of shortcuts that you can use to print and put next to you on your computer and so on just for the ease of usage. One thing that I also like to do before I even get into any editing and so on, and you only do it once at the beginning of setting up your Capture One, is to make sure that it's as intuitive as possible. So for me, for example, I kind of looked at these icons here and see what I need and what I don't need. For example, I never really do live shooting um, or tethered shooting, so I don't really need this in here in general. I'm just gonna go into Capture. There we go. And now I'm just gonna rearrange these two as well because uh, this is exposure and light balance and so on. And this is more of colors. And I usually do um, exposure before my colors. So I'll uh, hold command and just drag it in here. And now I have my highlights, exposure and so on. And then I can go into color, which is just more intuitive. And it's a small change, but if you are used to working a certain way, it definitely does help. I did actually want to mention that there is a new version of Capture One that came out. Um, it literally came out a few days ago. So as you see, the layout is a bit different. So if you do use the new version, make sure to check it out. You have all your adjustments here, your white balance exposure, high dynamic range clarity and dehaze, all in this area of adjustments. And then colors are all under one section as well, which is really handy. One thing that I also want to discuss is styles. I am not going to go into depth on how I create them, but I will kind of skim through it just to show you guys because I think it's an important part of speeding up your process. So, for example, when I create my styles, a lot of the time I have very similar settings. Um, when it comes to high dynamic range, I usually bring down my highlights and my whites and I keep up my shadows and blacks a bit higher because I do tend to underexpose my images. I usually work with a bit of dehaze as well. 
and then when it comes to color i work a lot with color editor and i usually go for basics you can also do skin tones as well um but again i'm not gonna get into it so once i have all my settings done um like so as you see here i have different settings changed go into your styles and presets and you can create a custom style and here you can select what you do and you do not want in these styles so i will say save and then i'm going to name it um, something like basic for example and i know it says not to use camera profile but to be honest i mostly use the same camera so this is not a problem for me so i'll just press save and now that we have this style selected i can go command a and basically select all my photos and apply the custom style so for example here you have basic which is pretty much the same as beach because i haven't really changed it but you get the idea or i have another one called overcast so i can cl uh, click on that and then it automatically applies the same selection for every single image which as you can imagine it saves you a ton of time to do that you know to just be able to do that and then once you have it ready you can just decide and you know adjust it accordingly to the image okay guys that's it for today i hope you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful there are so many amazing ways to use capture 122 that makes your life easier so make sure to take advantage of it and use it also take advantage of my discount code in the description below it gives you 20 percent off for the yearly subscriptions of capture 122 for all the new subscribers and it's limited to 100 people only so make sure you get it while it's still there okay guys thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video and i will see you guys in the next one